Right. So what I want to talk a little bit about now is what do we do when we when we have more resistors in a series circuit? What do we do with parallel circuits? Before I go into that, last time we talked a little bit about circuits using some actual diagrams of circuits. And so what I want to kind of tell you to begin with is some of the different uh, ways to represent things on a, on a circuit. So the first thing is if I have a battery, so this would be the negative side, this would be the positive side of the battery. So that's a battery. If I have an LED light bulb, So the LED light bulb will look something like this. So this is an LED. If I have a switch, it would look like this. And lastly, if I have a resistor, it would look like this. So a resistor just adds resistance, so that's basically its primary uh, source. So one of the questions you can ask yourself is, what if I have more than one resistor on a series circuit? So for example, suppose I've got some type of battery, and I'm running through and i got a switch, and then I have a resistor, and say this is 330 ohms, and then I have another resistor, and this is 10k ohms, and then I have an LED light bulb, and then I have another LED light bulb. and then it runs back to the battery. So one of the questions you can ask yourselves is, how do I figure out the current now? So remember the Ohm's law says that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So what do I do? So this is a 9 volt battery. The first thing you do is you say, this is a series circuit. So in this series circuit, I have two LED light bulbs. So if I've got two LED light bulbs, the total uh, number of light bulbs on here, so the total voltage, would be 9 minus 2 minus 2, or 5 volts. And the resistance turns out in a series, the resistance is equal to the sum of the resistance. So in series, you just add them. So I've got 10,000 plus 330, so I have 10,330. So the resistance 10,330. So then that means I can figure out the current. The current on each of these light bulbs will be the same. The current will be equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And if I take 5 divided by 10, 1030, I get 0 0.00048 amps which is equal to 0.48 milliamps. So it's getting closer to half of our previous video when we were looking at the 7 milliamps. In series, not half bad, you just had the resistance. But what if we were talking about a parallel circuit? So now suppose I'm looking at a parallel circuit. And suppose we're looking at the resistance across the entire thing. So in a parallel circuit, I'm going to have a battery, and then I'm going to have some type of resistance, and I'm going to have some type of LED light bulb. And then I'm going to run through, and I'll put the switch down here so that when it turns on, it turns everything on. And then I'm going to have another one, and maybe I'll have another resistor, and another resistor, and maybe I'll put two LED light bulbs on this one. So this is a parallel series because we've got two, two ways for the electricity to flow. It can go this way or it can go this way. Now it's not going to go you know, down this path and then back that way. Think about the way that the water would flow. If you start pumping the water right here, it's going to follow these two paths to try to get out at the very end. There's not going to be like a bunch of backflow. So what we end up having is we have these two paths that we can actually follow. So suppose that I make this 330 ohms. Maybe I'll make this one kilo ohm. And I'll make this 220 ohms. 
and then maybe, sorry, 220 ohms to your pure. I got two LED light bulbs. I'll make this a 9 volt battery because that's what we're working with is a 9 volt battery. We say, well, what's the current? So the idea is that we can actually compute the current on each of the individual paths using the idea that the voltage can be computed on each series. So the voltage in each series the voltage in each series is basically pay attention to this that series. So for this first series, pretend like the extra stuff's not even there. And for the second series, pretend like that middle line's not even there. They're each their own individual series. So for this one right here, the voltage is 9 minus 1 LED light bulb, so minus 2 is 7. For the resistance, same thing, the resistance is given. Do the exact same thing. So the resistance here, the resistance is going to be 330 ohms. And since you're just paying attention to these series, you can do that. So here we've got the voltage here. The voltage for this one is, well, we got 9 minus 2 minus 2, so it's 5. And then the resistance is 1,000 plus 220, so that's 1,220. So for each of these, you can actually compute the current. So in this case, it's the voltage divided by the resistance, so 7 divided by 330. In this case, it's the voltage divided by the resistance, so I is equal to 5 over 1220. So for the first one, we've got 7 divided by 330, which is 0 0.021. And then for this one, we've got 5 divided by 1220, and it says 0 0.04098 amps. Now we can see in this case that the light bulb right here is going to glow the brightest. It's got the least amount of resistance, and there's one, only one LED, so it's going to glow the brightest. So that's how you do it when you're trying to figure out the current on a parallel series. One of the things, though, that you can ask yourself is, how fast is the electricity flowing right here? Now, if you think about it from a water standpoint, if you've got water flowing in from this pipe and water flowing in from this pipe, they're going to come together and they're going to go, they're going to kind of add to each other's speed. So, if we talk about the total current, the current that's coming in right at the very end, you would add the currents of these two. You would add the currents of each path. So we've got two paths. We would add up the 0 0.021 and the 0 0.004. So we'd end up getting like 0 0.025, something in that range when we're talking about the total current, when we actually add up those two. Now for the total resistance, there's a little bit more of a complicated formula. For the total resistance, The total resistance, which we denote RT, is equal to 1 over 1 over the first resistance plus 1 over the second resistance plus all the way over to the last resistance. So each one of these is the different resistances from the different paths. And if you want the total resistance, you've got to plug it into this formula. So in our case right here, if we wanted to compute the total resistance, our total resistance is equal to 1 over the resistance from the first path, 330, so it's 1 over all this, plus 1 over the resistance from the second path, 1 over 1220. And if you plug that into a calculator, we got 1 divided by 330, plus 1 divided by 1220, and if I take 1 divided by that, I get 259.74. That's the total resistance. Now notice that is smaller than this one and smaller than this one. So the total resistance on the line is actually kind of small. In addition, the total current is the sum of the currents. So it's kind of large. 
This is the reason why in your house, when you got wires running through, you don't want to plug in too many things to the same, uh, same electrical circuit, uh, circuit breaker. So if you plug in a bunch of light bulbs and run them all at the same time, as you add resistors, you're not really adding resistance because everything's in parallel. You're actually decreasing the resistance. The total resistance goes down as you add things to the circuit breaker. If the total resistance goes down, the total current goes up. And if the current goes up too fast, too high, that electric is going to be running too fast through those wires into your circuit breaker. And if it's running too fast, it's going to start to burn the wires. That's why we have circuit breakers. That's why they break. They open up and they don't allow you to actually flow electricity anymore. So that's how you figure out the total resistance and the total current on a parallel series or parallel circuit.